What an honor to host you, Natasha. What an honor to host you, so, to host your good energy. In a nutshell, other than her beautiful smile that is trans <laughs> transpiring the scene, Natasha uh, has been is an incredible mental health activist, um, mm -hmm. advocate. Um, she has created communities all over the U.S. and worldwide, and she's very active in the Florida area as well. She's hands-on. She's a power woman. So she is going to give us these practical tools, and she's going to give her per, per perception of the issues at hand today. So thank you, Natasha, because we're really proud to have you because you're grassroots and you're on it daily. So the stage Thank is yours. You. Thank you so much. It is an honor first to be included among these amazing speakers, but I'm always delighted when I'm able to see both of you. And so thank you for it. You know, tonight's event is, is for me groundbreaking because often when the conversation, mental health conversation is being had, it's clinicians, researchers, educators, the person that's often missing from the table is the person with the lived experience, the person who has the mental illness diagnosis or is experiencing the mental health challenge. And to hear so many stories tonight and to be included, not just as an educator or an advocate or an activist, but as someone who has had mental health challenges, someone who was diagnosed with what's considered a severe mental illness, to be able to share at this level on, on this platform is something that I'm truly, truly grateful for. So for anyone watching, you are in pain right now, you're frustrated, you're having a dark night of the soul. Understand from my heart to yours, you are never alone. And I am someone who understands. I wanna be clear that the coronavirus, this global pandemic is not creating mental illness. For me, I see the coronavirus as a thermometer and it's checking our global temperature and it's showing that we're sick. We're sick, we are mentally, collectively mentally sick. And how did it happen? It happened with the, the definition of value and worthiness that has been modeled before us, that has been trained and ingrained into us that we are expected to uh, ascribe to. Value and worthiness right now in our society is very strict, very rigid. It is based on what you can do, what you can give, what you can contribute, what you have. It's all based on our human doing instead of on our human being. And so now we have a global pandemic where we're losing our jobs and our businesses. We're losing possessions, foreclosure, repossession. We're losing all of the stuff that for so long we've been told is the sum and the measure of our value. And now devoid of all of those things, we're left to fall back on a place that is really foreign to us, which is our being, our human being. Who are we? Who am I? without a title, without a job, without a position, without money in the bank, who am I? And so what we're seeing is that many people are coming face to face with having to redefine their value based on something that is internal rather than something that is external to them. And so until we redefine value and worthiness, as something that is our internal power, we're gonna to continue to experience the external pressure that is producing the mental health challenge that we're facing. You know, I am grateful to have been able to hear Marian Williamson because she's, she's spot on. Our nation, our, our globe is sick. We have not placed enough significance on the who that we are, on our innate power, our innate uh, gifting first to ourselves and then to the world. And so solution, how do we even fix this? The first thing is to redefine what is success for you? What is value to you? And that is such a creative step because a creative and, and courageous because it means you're going to have to defy every definition that you have been given 
that does not align to who you are. If success for you is education and degrees and, and, and possessions, and that's what you desire to achieve and have for you, great. <laughs> However, if you are pursuing those things because of an external expectation, because of what your grandmother has said or your fourth grade teacher or your guidance counselor, it is an expectation that you are not gonna be able to maintain. And so when we have a, 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 a crisis where children, the second leading cause of death for children, for, for people aged 10 to 34 is suicide. People are opting and, and, and choosing this path. And, and, and trust me, when you get to the point that you are considering suicide, it is because you have lost hope. It is because you have tried everything. It is because you have asked and sought and looked and researched and you have lost the hope that tomorrow possibly could be, might be better, might be a little bit more peaceful, might be a little bit more happy. You've lost that. And so we're still, the globe is still, the world is still, what do we do? This is a time where we do not run from quiet, we don't run from stillness, we don't run from a shutdown, but we ask ourselves, what is there for me to learn about myself, about others, about God? Value for me, and I speak from experience. I speak as one who has been depressed, has been anxious, who has ha had suicidal thoughts. That's been my life, a, a large portion of my life. What am I doing in this time? I'm embracing the stillness because I had to reset my value. I had to strip and shed myself from every expectation of me, from I need to be thin, I need to be pretty, I need to be educated, I need to have several degrees, I need to go to law school. I've had to redefine what value is for Natasha because that's truly the only person I know how to be. I can't be anyone else. And every time that I have tried to be who someone else expected of me, it created an inner turmoil that was unbearable. Mm -hmm. And so microcosm individually, redefine value, redefine worthiness that's just based on who that you are. If you never do another thing, if you never, never get another certificate, degree, if you never make another dollar, you are lovable, you're worthy, you're valuable simply because you exist. Redefine. And as a corporate, as a world, this globe, am I expecting that after tonight's broadcast, we're going to redefine worthiness and you know we're gonna shed <laughs> everything we know? I'm hopeful, but I, it's not likely to happen. And of course, there's a seat at the table for acquisition and, and accolades and awards. But the moment that we place our doing above our being that's where we have the existential crisis. That's where we have the, the cognitive dissonance. That's where when we lose things, when we lose possessions and positions, that's when we're unable to cope. Thank, Thank you, you, Natasha. Thank you, Natasha. Thank, Thank you. you so much. That was wonderful. I can't wait to come and visit again all the work yes. that you're doing in the field. It's so fantastic. I'm, I'm so honored to be in your circle because you're really making a difference. So thank you. We love you. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Be safe. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you.